Hey what's up everybody, in this video I want to talk to you about K-weighting. The key difference between an ordinary RMS meter and an EBU loudness meter is that the EBU meter applies a filter to the signal before measuring the level and that filter is called a K-weighting filter. Now as the name implies that filter is used to weight different frequency ranges in a way that approximates the way we humans perceive sound. So this video is going to be somewhat of a technical explanation and demonstration of what the K-weighting is and does. And hopefully this will help you to understand what's going on inside of an EBU meter. So first of all, let's take a look at the specification of the K-filter. It's in this document right here. Um, if we scroll down. And the K-filter is actually uh, composed of two filters here. The first one is a high-pass filter, which looks like this and has a boost of four decibels. And the second filter is a high pass filter or a low cut. I've tried to approximate the shape of these two filters within Ableton Live with the EQ8, and this is the result. So, this is pretty much the K curve. And now, to see the K weighting in action, let's try to feed uh, an EBU meter with a sinusoidal signal first. So, here I have the DMG Audio Dualism, which is a very nice visualizer and meter VST. And let's go ahead and just look at the RMS and peak values. And here we have Serum with a sine wave loaded. And if you look down here at the peak and RMS values, they are both the same as you would expect with peak and RMS. And right now they're at minus six. The value of minus six should stay no matter what frequency we use. So let's try sweeping the frequency of that sine wave. Okay, now here we have an EBU loudness meter. It displays the short term and the momentary loudness. And the real difference between those two is that the short term loudness takes longer to react to the signal. So we're going to pay attention to the momentary loudness for now. Down here is a spectrum device where you can see the frequency. And now let's look at the behavior of the EBU loudness meter. So if you paid attention to the momentary loudness, we started out with quite a low frequency and the value here was like minus seven or something like that. And at high frequencies, it was about minus three. And this is LKFS. The K in here actually stands for K weighting, but uh, LKFS is identical to LUFS. And the fact that the momentary loudness was increased by about four units above roughly one K is of course not a coincidence. It's due to the shape of this filter. As you can see, it boosts like starts at 1K and it boosts four decibels. Now let's see if we also can see the effect of the high pass filter. I'm gonna sweep the frequency down this time. Let's take a look. And here we are like way below the hearing range. I don't know what frequency this is. It's somewhere in the area of 15 hertz or something like that and you can actually see that the values are really low. Now let's really quickly listen to the effects of the K-curve on actual music to get a feeling for what it does and I'm going to use my more or less accurate uh, approximation here and some productions from myself because I think I can't use anything else because of copyright, but you can of course uh, try this out for yourself. So I'm going to start with the K-filter turned off and play a little bit of the song and then I'm going to turn it on. So let's take a listen to that.
So I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight about what an EBU meter is actually measuring. Uh, if this was helpful, please consider supporting me by subscribing, hitting the like button, showing this to your friends, uh, sharing, liking my Facebook page, you know, all the usual things. <laughs> and um, yeah, take care and einen schönen Tag wünsche ich noch.